something about Joel Schumacher <laughs> and saxophones. <laughs> Loves it. He did Man's Lost Boys too, it. and he fucking loves saxophones. He's a saxophonist. I think he was going all in. He's like, dude, saxophones are going to be in music <laughs> from here on out. But it's Should. it's saxophone is great when used sparingly, not a solo <laughs> over the entire fucking song. <laughs> what? Like, love. Let's rock! <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do. It's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house. Uh But there was something truly special about heading to Blockbuster, picking out a movie by hand, and taking it home to watch with the girl you love and her boyfriend. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, two dudes who believe in premarital sax. Yeah. Sean Pryor and AJ Vens, how the heck are you? What do you think that Look, was tuned to, you know? Oh, I don't know. Was it was it like an A minor? A minor. A- yeah. The what? The sax? Yeah. yeah. You don't tune saxophones, do you? Right. Yeah, right. No, I think you do with a I... tuning fork. Oh, yeah. That's what tuning yep. forks are for. Yeah. Yep. Those are yep. cool. We need to get one in here. Yep. Do we don't have one? Uh-uh. Shit. Well, we'll get one, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but who is sexier? Sax man here or sax man from Lost Boys? It's true. Um, I would say Lost Boys just because it was real. Oh. Uh, no, well. I'm, not, I'm not into muscles. You're not a muscle man. No. I'm, I'm into like actual talent. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, okay. I, I prefer him. Not just well. Who much. was sweatier though? It's true. Ooh. If you would have taken um, our boy Billy's shirt off, like who yeah. would have actually been sweatier? I mean, it's true. He. I mean, he was. That man was was drenched. He was like <laughs> he was like post NBA game interview sweaty. <laughs> Well, boy, we're di- we're going way too far. Oh, yeah, we got to we- set this up. <laughs> what movie are we even Listen, talking about? On today's episode, we discuss a movie that gave us the Brat Pack in all their glory. A movie featuring some of the finest looking actors and actresses of the 80s. A movie whose title song went straight to number one on the Billboard charts and stayed for two weeks. We're, of course, talking about 1985 St. Elmo's Fire. I can see him. Well, damn, dang it. Ladies and gentlemen. It's time for another nostalgic journey to the past <laughs> with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Well, we're so glad to have you here. If you are new to the podcast, we're going to be reviewing St. Elmo's Fire scene by scene That's me. with a modern eye. But in order to do that properly, we got to start with nostalgia. We got to talk about our first time seeing it, what our rating was when we were kids. I'm going to start with you, Sean. What are your thoughts on this one, nostalgically? Um, I'm going to give this a. I'm going to give it a 7.9. I, I first like first watch this on like AMC, all the TV stations that this was on, uh, TBS, what have you. Um, I was I loved the Breakfast Club, so this had all of them in it, and I was a sad, melancholic um, middle schooler going into high school thinking about girls. So I can't I wait till it. I get to college. Yeah, <laughs> you had college. Yes. Seven point nine nostalgically <laughs> for Sean AJ. What about you, man? Uh, kind of a similar similar place. Um, I, it was it was at my house and watching it. I believe it was a TBS thing, like. It was this was on TV. I, I yeah yeah. I don't it, remember it was. seeing it. Um, and I I just I don't know somewhere in in between. The reason being is because I remember seeing this. Then there was like Breakfast Club, and then obviously Shawshank Redemption, <laughs> um, all sandwiched in there at some point. And but that's an th- entire day. The problem is is just like just like Breakfast Club, this movie got cut up a ton. Okay, so there wasn't a lot of cohesive nature to it. I, but I will say, for what I saw, I liked probably because my young brain was like, oh, yeah, it's just Breakfast Club 
The same thing. You thought they were the same people? Yeah, it's like, oh, this is I just did. like anthology stories telling or something like that. I don't know. You know, it's Man, like Bender yeah. really cleaned his life up. Yeah, he did. He yeah. really came together. I truly you know. thought it was a sequel to Breakfast Club. Damn, dude. Yeah. Like 100%. So, yeah, like, uh, honestly, I think I, I'm probably like a, a an eight. It's just a straight up eight. That's interesting, though, because I think you gave, I think you both gave Breakfast Club very low nostalgic ratings. Mm. Interesting. So interesting to think that, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, this is interesting because the fact that I am a lot older than you guys. Yeah. Uh, cheers. We're back. Cheers. We're back. We haven't done that in a while. I know. Uh, so I thought when I first heard this name, this movie come out, I thought it was about Sesame Street. Because <laughs> I was literally like a seven-year-old <laughs> kid. Fire going, burning deep within <laughs> yeah, him that he Saint needed to release. Almost fire? What are we talking about? So I definitely avoided this. But then when I was to the age where I could have watched it, I was like, well, I don't want to watch a dumb 80s movie. You know, so like I never I never saw this movie. I never had wow. a desire oh. to go out and see it. And interestingly enough, we got executive producer Josh Miller, who I believe is my age. Same thing. He said, as for St. Elmo's Fire, this is an I've never seen. As I said in the executive producer email thread, for some reason, I thought this was a hospital drama with all young med students, <laughs> like a prequel to ER. Oh. Yeah, the TV show. I don't know why, but that's what I thought. Starling set me straight. <laughs> Thinks I'll like it. Pressure is on. So nostalgically, okay. N.A. So that's a 7.95 nostalgically for the group, which is going to be pretty high. 7.95 is falling into the 26th spot that is right below Lethal Weapon, right above Rad. Oh, is how we felt about that as kids. Wow. Okay, okay, that works. But we are going to strip that completely away. This whole segment does Ew. not even matter. Take it out of your head because <laughs> we're going to move right on to the modern day review. But we got to talk about pertinent, important details of the movie. That's where Sean comes in. What do you got, man? Pretty important. <laughs> produced, important, by, important. <laughs> produced by Bernard Schwartz, Ned Tannen, and Lauren Schuller Donner. Did I say that? No, okay, I, I legitimately asked. I'm going to say, I'm going to change my notes I right now to say, it. we'll learn all the important details. <laughs> I like that. Okay, here we go. It was, you know, we're saving time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It is. Oh my God! That'll cut a second off the show. <laughs> oh, he's batching his language. That's awesome. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Written by Carl Kurlander and Joel Schumacher. Cin cinematography by Stephen H. Burham. Uh, he also did The Outsiders, The Untouchables, Carlito's Way, Mission Impossible, and Mystery Men. Worked with De Palma a lot. Uh, edited by Richard Marks. Directed by Joel Schumacher. And editor's apprentice Jim Pryor. Wow. Do you know him? No relation. Uh, Cast. Mm. Emilio Estevez. Rob Lowe. Andrew McCarthy. Demi Moore. Demi? Demi. <laughs> Judd Nelson. Ali Demi. Sheedy. Mara Winningham. Uh, Martin Balsam. Andy McDowell. And Blake Clark. Executive producer Ned Tannen, who had previously produced The Breakfast Club, wanted another Breakfast Club type film to have a one-two punch at the box office. He bought the script of St. Elmo's Fire from Joel Schumacher and Carl Kurlander. Before that, Schumacher had a hard time selling the script to studios, recalling, the, recalling one studio after reading the script saying, these are the most loathsome people on earth. <laughs> okay. It's got a point. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to play these loathsome people, casting director Lauren Schuller Donner looked at the who's who of 1980s teen royalty. Anthony Edwards and Leah Thompson were interviewed. But in the end, Donner accepted the recommendations of John Hughes and cast Estevez, Sheedy, and Nelson, along with the others who would forever be known as the Brat Pack. Did you know um, who was Leah Thompson supposed to play? Does it did it get down uh, on that? One of the chicks, obviously. I just want to throw it out there so I don't forget. I wanted I wanted her to be Wendy. If I'm looking back, on ooh this. yeah, that's yeah, cool. I wanted that. That's good. Yeah, that that's solid. So can we live? Can we just live in that world where that's where she was cast? Mm. You don't like Mara Winningham? No, I just want to. I want to know that Leah Thompson was. Cast for that role. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. Considered. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's all I all want right. to do. That's fine. Mark it down. Okay. Principal photography <laughs> began in October of 1984. The film shot primarily in Washington D.C. and originally wanted uh, the the production originally wanted to shoot at Georgetown University, but they read the script and said no way. So the University <laughs> of Maryland was it was um, just the overall probably uh, loathsome people in the script and. Uh, Drugs and alcohol use and the swear words and uh, oh, wow. premarital sex. Yeah, because that has nothing to do Should with college. Should he keep going? Or like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because I mean, that's just super weird. There's right? just so much. That doesn't know? happen at our college. No, none <laughs> no. of that happens well, at we just Well, we just can't let people know that it happens. It, it, it happens like. at Petertown, but not Georgetown. <laughs> we, can't, <okay? laughs> we can't advertise for people to apply for Georgetown so they can fuck and suck and, and do all the <gasps> Wait drugs. Wait a minute. Yeah. Th that's, that's for those. We do want them to come here. Oh. Ah, now what do we do? Fuck. Uh, now everyone over at Henrytown's gonna get it. 
Thomas Town. <laughs> Ooh, Thomas Town. Oh no, Howard Town's <laughs> poaching all our students. <laughs> <laughs> St. Elmo's Fire was released on June 28, 1985, and on a budget of $10 million, the film made $37.8 million at the box office. And uh, now we're going to review it. God, I hate when Sean <laughs> just tips his hat. And he's uh, like, I hate this movie, and I, you're going to know about it from the start. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Well, thanks, Sean. That was a great segment. Up next, we're going to go to AJ. That was a lot of fun. AJ's going to tip his hat, too, <laughs> but he's going to use ratings and reviews from critics and fans alike. Hope so. <laughs> Hope not. <sighs> I, I don't have anything for this, guys. You know what? Let's just go <laughs> and let's get into it because we always got to consult the, the tomato, tomato meter. meter. Gross. Yeah, it kind of is at this point. 42%. That's a splat on listen, the tomato meter. Listen to this, though. Of all the movies we've done, that is bottom 25. That is tied with Rad, Young Guns, Just Friends, Teen Wolf. Wow. Oh. Hmm. Company. Those are per movies. The critics. Per just, the critics. That I, uh, we'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, 68% per the audience score over there. Uh, and a 6.4%. On IMDb. Interestingly enough, that is the exact same as last week. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Same rating. Wow, okay. 6.4 per the fans. Yeah. None of them are probably that great of people, to be honest. No, they never are. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, IGN gave this an 80 out of 100. Well written, well made, well acted. St. Elmo's Fire is a quintessential film about the strange middle ground between youth and adulthood. Uh, we also had uh, The Hollywood Reporter. They gave it a... Uh, what would that be? That's that's like a that's a four point three out of thirteen. I think that was the math on that one. <laughs> um, Hollywood Reporter says, despite the often skewed story, performances uh, under Joel Schumacher's intelligent direction are spirited and on the mark. Most notably, that of Lowe as the caddish pretty boy, and more as the frazzled coker. Yep, they said that <laughs> in, an, in an interview or in a review. He's a coker. Um, he told me that at a dinner. <laughs> what? <laughs> just quoting, oh, man. I was just quoting some uh, I think you should leave. Okay. Just sprinkling that in whenever I can. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> they told me that at a dinner. Hold that door. Hold that door. <laughs> Damn it. No. Oh, fine. Um anyways, uh the other leads uh, Estevez, McCarthy, Sheedy, Winningham, and Nelson all deserve plaudits for their credible con contributions. So they were like, yeah, um, Lowe's good. Um, War is hot. <laughs> the other guys are okay. Yeah. Okay. I respect there that. There we go. I get it. I respect I, it. I understand that. I, I respect res honesty. I respect it. Okay. I respect it. Uh, uh, 20 out of 20 out of 100. Two out of ten. Make the math simple, guys. Uh, Estevez and Nelson are as unappealing here as in The Breakfast Club. Though, in fairness, they are hampered by a script that seems to despise its characters. So, Ooh. by the end, will you? That's really mm. interesting. Like, yeah. Like, did did he want? Did he like actually like these characters, or did he like hate these characters? Right. Wow. I know. Um, they really go on to say, I think this needs to be an obvious one, uh, just a short instant here. Uh, there's a very little plot in the movie, just an excursion through the growing pains of some very plastic characters. That was a 3.8 out of 10. Okay. So 38 out of 100. Yeah, that was a 0.38 out of one. Shit. I know. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is a one and three quarters of a star Dude. colored in on a five star rating. But see, we don't color in the points, we color in the armpits. Yep. Yep. Right? Yeah, it's totally different. If it's, if it's a horror we, movie, it gets like yeah. four to five daggers. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do that? <laughs> daggers? <laughs> <laughs> this movie gets this movie gets one out of four lines of coke. <laughs> I say again, what the fuck are we talking about? I don't know. No one knows. <laughs> All right, here. Um, let's just let's get through a couple of these. Ten out of ten. Uh, <laughs> said Bevo one three six seven eight. I'm pretty sure we've had Bevo on here before. That sounds familiar. Um, pretty sure that they're also a a pretty consistent uh, contributor to high MDB. <laughs> uh, the song goes all right. The movie is probably okay. It has some decent actors, <laughs> but it's probably okay. 
know. But the, the older I get, the more I appreciate that type of a review. Yeah. That's just like, here is my three thoughts. The song is good. Looks like it has some good actors. I don't know. I it's probably it. okay then. It's probably good. <laughs> uh, did I, by the way, that was a 10 out of 10 review. I like so. that. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Man, that was good. It was worth giving it that 10 out of 10. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 80s classic. This is um, uh, Rochelle. Rochelle in his. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. This is an 80s classics. Uh, this is called 80s classic. It's uh, 8 out of 10. It must have been a capital 8 80s classic. Uh, this is an 80s classics. Any review by someone who didn't grow up circa 78 to 99 needs not review. Because, spelled C-U-Z, because you will never get it. Also, trying to review an era you know nothing about is null and void. The end. Oh, cool. Got ya. So we we should shut this down right now. You, huh? Well, no, we're okay. We're between 99. Oh, 99. Yeah, yeah we're okay. good. Okay, yeah, we're, we're good. good. We made it, guys. I always forget. Um... I always forget. Here, last one. One out of ten. Don't make my mistake. This has the same actors as Breakfast Club, <laughs> therefore it should be good. No. <laughs> Warning spoilers from German Del Della Man Mancha in 2023. Very recent. Okay. So basically a gang of toxic people. <laughs> this movie seems to seems like the celebration of toxic and fragile masculinity. The guy who is cheating on his girlfriend is so angry because her because her girlfriend does the same. His girlfriend must be. The toxiest guy. Toxiest. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, actually, what it, to, the most toxic. Okay, the toxiest the, the toxiest. of them all. Yeah. Toxicists. I think that would be most a... Most toxic. I think the one with a, most toxicity. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Of the toxicity of our city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Uh, the toxiest guy is posed as an amazing rock star. He is a guy who can't even afford rent because he is always drinking, avoiding responsibilities with his son. Rad. Uh, an <laughs> Great movie. Uh, another one stalks a girl and is so angry because she doesn't love him. Still, when she said no, he said, I don't care. What does he do? Leaving her alone? Respect her will? <laughs> no. He steals a car by the end of by the night. Stole by the a night. car, whoa. And goes to her house in the woods where she is passing weekend, passing the weekend with the man she loves. She tell, tells her again, why is he? No. <laughs> what does he do? He kisses her without her permission and celebrates it as if he was as if she was a trophy. Uh, oh, geez. OK, that's fine. Terrible movie. If you think you have hey, you have to see this because you liked girl in pink. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even know. I don't know. I've uh, never seen it. Heard it was good. Or the Amazing Breakfast Club. <laughs> Got that one right. Can that be the whole title? <laughs> the Amazing that, Breakfast the Club. The Amazing Breakfast Club, and it's the same picture, but it's just like comic book font. Yes, Produced uh, by yeah. Marvel. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, you are so wrong. Terrible. Terrible. There you go. Okay. Three out of seven people uh, found that review helpful. That, well, I was one of them. So. Well, <laughs> yeah, I went in there and clicked that. Thanks, nice. AJ. You got it. <laughs> well, I have a question for our audience. How many times have you heard the word microdosing in the last month? My guess is that every one of you have heard it at least once, if not more than that, and there's a good reason for this. All sorts of people out in the world are microdosing to feel healthier, to feel happier, and to perform better. Microdosing is equivalent to getting in the zone, like finding that, that just right feeling. You know what it is. It's comparable to completing a good workout, getting out of a warm shower, taking the first bite of an incredible meal, getting cozy in bed after a long day. There are these moments when your body and mind are relaxed and at peace and in full power. Uh, this company sent us some to try. I'm not going to lie to you. I fell in complete love with this product. I had a terribly long week last week. I just wanted to let loose, but I also had so much to do bright and early the next day. So I opted instead of my normal, like, let's pound 47 beers in the driveway. <laughs> I opted for some microdose gummies. 
And it was the perfect amount of THC to help me relax, forget the stress of the day while I got to sit inside, watch St. Elmo's Fire. No lazy, no hazy feeling, no hangover. Uh, it was perfect, and there's really no other way to describe it. And this comes from a guy who generally does not like the intense feeling of gummies. Yeah. And like, like I'll do weed like twice a year. But like, I really don't want to go too far because <laughs> it'll it'll wreck me. <laughs> like, I can have forty seven beers in the driveway and be like, I'm fine. I'm good. So this is coming from a guy who generally does not like gummies. These microdose gummies were incredible, and I know you tried it too, Sean. Right? Yeah, I tried. I mean, like, it's, especially getting off a day of work when there's you know zero creativity happening, and like, it's kind of my job now to be creative as as much as we can with this. Um, I get home and I I'm just I just wanted like get something out on guitar or something like that. I uh, pop one of these in and kind of just sit there and something usually kind of comes or if I'm uh, knee deep into a script that I'm writing or something like that. Sometimes it just kind of takes all my worries away basically and I just can focus on uh, my task at hand and trying to be creative. It really feels like it enhances it. It puts me in a place where uh, I have to be creative. Yeah. And it feels good. And it's this world where, you know, there's a lot of the CBD products on. It's like, well, it's kind of like that. I've tried those and it's it's not kind of like that. It's mm. But these have THC in them and they are just below the limit to where they are are, they are legal to consume, and you can adjust your dosage at home. You guys have to try it out. I'm telling you, this is like my new favorite thing. To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code CONFUSE to get free shipping and 30% off your first Hell order. Yeah. That is microdose.com, code CONFUSE, microdose.com, code CONFUSE, free shipping, 30% off. Go do it. Give it a shot. Well, boys, there are several quintessential moments in a man's life. Losing his virginity, getting married, becoming a father, having the right girl smile at you, and starting a movie podcast so you can review St. Elmo's Fire. Oh, okay. You nice. know what I mean? Yeah. I've pretty much done them all at this point. All in that order? I've done them in that order. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, amazing, isn't nice. it? Nice. I'll get there. Well, here, yeah. here we go, boys. <laughs> So scene one, Alec, Leslie, Kevin, Jules, and Kirby head to the hospital to check on their friends Wendy and Billy after a minor car accident. The group gathers for drinks at St. Elmo's Bar and then heads home to their respective apartments. The next day, Kevin visits Jules at her apartment and Kerbo takes Dale on a short date. I was As soon as this opened up and it was the voiceover, I think it was Ali Sheedy or... Uh, I don't actually, yeah, I think it was. Okay, and then uh, it was them walking from campus, and that kind of fades into them walking like to St. Amos. Uh, I liked that a lot, and when it started, I'm like, that's that's art right there, man. I can't yeah. wait to, for the rest of this movie. Now someone else talk. Nah. <laughs> God, he's tipping his head. Is he going to like it or not? <laughs> I can't tell yet. I just don't know uh, he likes this movie. He's keeping me on the edge of his hat. Uh, I think... Uh, like there is a part of this that this there's a part of this that feels very like made for TV. Um, Dude, do you know what I mean? I, yeah. It's almost like this should have been like a like a ten part Netflix series. I agree that they should have they should have dove deeper into so yeah. they, so they could like actually have like character growth kind of towards yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, but to me, but to me, this is like this is like real world, real world, actual friends though. Yeah, it like, does feel like because like Friends yeah. is not real world. What, what, like those guys in Friends were like this age, right? Like they were all yeah. just out of college, and and all they did was just sit around and not work and <laughs> and be best friends and yeah. like have all this time to spend together. But this show this movie shows how actually the real world is. Like you come out of doing what they did in Friends into like, well, I don't have time for anything anymore. Yeah. We can't all live in the same place and across the hall from each <laughs> yeah. other. This is ridiculous. Like <laughs> I can't afford that. Can't. You got a good job. I don't. What I the don't. hell? <laughs> and and that that is like I will get it. Did did you guys did both of you go to college? Yeah. For a semester. Uh, for a semester. So no. <laughs> where where did you go? Kirkwood. Okay. So yeah. none of you had like the 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 college like where you go away where you get dorm and you yeah. you guys didn't have and see I don't know if that changes my opinion on on some of this compared to you because I did I did have that really hard transition into life out of college. Okay. Where I don't know if you have that if you don't fully immerse yourself into it into, into five a years of just being like I'm invincible, and all I do is party, and I'm I'm the king of the world. Because that's how college <laughs> felt for me. And it's, then you go into the real world, and it's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> you know? I, I've always thought that, personally. Like, you know, 
um, my my wife went to school for many years. Uh, she's a, literally a doctor. A lot of people go, to, <laughs> but she actually did. Yeah, not me. Is he a doctor? Um, <laughs> and so, like that's that's the one thing that I always talked about though too is I went for a couple of years, and it was very different from like the quintessential yes. like college experience or the one that you really see in the movies and on TV. It's not dorms and stuff. Kind of have, have an apartment. You kind of get thrust into that like uh, middle ground, like or that post college is like mixed with your college, yes, almost. So it like kind of hits you earlier. You have a longer period to like adjust to it, yeah. Slowly, you're kind of adjusting like on the fly. Yes, is really what it comes into. Whereas you have people who go to college for I think like four years, six years, seven, eight, whatever it is, that it, it takes so long to get out of that mindset. I think of like because. No matter what you think, college is still a very structured way to live. Yes. So you have to fall out of that structure that you become accustomed to for four, five, six the years. The unstructured structure of yeah. college. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And 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 you I think people end up start to miss miss that like almost right away. Yeah. When they realize what they've done. And I this is uh, like I like to think about Rob Lowe in this movie because the moment they walk out of there, and I love the fact that He's just got his trusty saxophone right there in the back of the ambulance. Watch the sax, man. Let, let's spend some. Let's let's one by one. We'll break down these characters. Yeah. Know. Let's talk about Billy here. Billy. I mean, Billy. Billy's dropping lines immediately. He believing in premarital sax. He's he's talking to the girl at the bar. <laughs> saying, well, this don't worry. This face seats five. God, are, are you fucking you're like, kidding me? You're like, what shut the fuck like, up? Who the hell are and you? And she loved it. She's like, you're right. It does. I'll call my friends up now. Ro- Rob Lowe, <laughs> I, Rob Lowe is one of the sexiest looking dudes I've ever seen in this movie. And then you cannot tell me that they did not model Billy from Stranger Things exactly Dude, after this. Oh, yeah. I saw a deep fake. Somebody put it online where they put. They deep faked Rob Lowe's face from this into Billy and Stranger Things. Yeah. And you're like, there it is. That's him. I mean, it is. It's literally him. I mean, and uh, I, he's this. He is he kind of just the ultimate bad boy, I guess, or he just he's the he's the over the top guy, just no no rules. But okay, so he's the guy. He's not a bad boy. He's just like the. He's the guy that's just like I don't really care. Like I don't know. Like, Extremely irresponsible. I- yeah. Irresponsible, but but yes, to the point where he's just carefree, and and it's it's kind of attractive and inspiring to be like, oh, he just doesn't even care. Yeah, he's not even stressed out about anything. You know, like that is an inspiring thing when you're that age. And and it's this movie's interesting about we all had those friends in like high school and just in your twenties that were like that. And you're like, man, if I could only be like that, if I could, but I'm always kind of worried. I'm kind of anxious. And then they stay that way. Yeah. And then times change and, and it's not as cool anymore. Like him wanting to go back to college, it's not cool. You know, he, didn't we just talk about that where you're right on the cusp of like when you do go back, it's going to be creepy. Right. You know, and he's yeah. just there. He's going to find that out for, for himself to be like, ah, damn it. Yeah, I'm not cool anymore. Sometimes you have to, and you know, oftentimes you're the only person who can show that to yourself. <laughs> and like, he still thinks it's awesome to be able to go back to college, and like we, as we'll get to, and uh, it, it's just, dude, it's not. It's like you have to move on. And I think that this is a, since we're on the subject of Billy, I think it's important to note how this is kind of like a a weird almost social media kind of vibe because like what you're saying Mike oh man it'd be awesome to be like that carefree and then you realize this movie immediately shows you all the problems behind it Mm -hmm. whereas I think oftentimes a character like Billy maybe another character in this movie you it just shows you all the it could very easily just show you all the cool things that Billy does and not all the shitty things you know yeah that makes sense but it makes it makes all the shitty things seem okay Especially his fucking friends, like who are all enablers. Yeah. At this point, they all enable each other, and it's fucking ridiculous because he yeah. just got in a car crash with Wendy. Yeah. Drunk driving. And by the way, how did, he, was he, he out? In and he like just walked 30 out. Minutes? Yeah. Well, then he then he's just like, are you like I'm sorry? Are you mad at me? He's like, yeah. Are you mad at me for like having this horrible reputation that I do, and I get my my friends and others in trouble <laughs> all the goddamn time? She's like, no, it's fine. You know, it's whatever. no, it's fucking not. <laughs> 
and, and no, then it's they, not. And they completely <laughs> gloss over the yeah. fact that he's married with a child. Yeah. It's just like, ah, whatever. Like, ah, that, don't worry about that. Nobody ever asked us, like, hey, how's your kid, Billy? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, nobody just asks about it. No. Like, and, and, and by the way, you're right. He's, it's just, oh, is Mary, is, is, uh, or, uh, is Wendy okay? It's, I guess, yeah, I she's guess. okay. She's got, she's literally got some sort of head trauma because she has a band aid on <laughs> <Yeah>. her head. <laughs> And then, but we're just, again, we're going to gloss over that and go get drinks. <laughs> oh, Which, man, w- Wendy, I think you got a concussion. Let's go drink. Yeah. <laughs> but, You'll feel oh, better right away. But that is, think about it, that is drinks, being 22, then, you know, 23, 24 home. years old. That is exactly what that is. It's like, should we go get some drinks? We should like, probably. That's, that's kind of what it was, right? <laughs> They'll be waiting for us at I the got, bar. I got a question for you guys. Did you guys see her? Who? Dale Bieberman? Did you guys see her? Did you see her? Yeah. Did you see her in the Did hospital? You see her? Uh, I took her to a Woody Allen movie one time. Yeah. That's my entire character for the rest of this movie. <laughs> Are you him? That's it. No. No. No, I'm just I'm playing a character oh, right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm yeah. playing Emilio. This West. is my soul. This is what I do. It's, that's it. He's done. He's done for it for the rest of the movie. <laughs> like he wanted to play, I think Billy's character like to has a little more dynamic, but th- this yeah. is just this is just <sighs> his character. Yeah. That's all he does in this movie. He's uh he's very like kind of He's very one-dimensional. Emilio Estevez, like his character of Kirby, is very one-dimensional. Yeah, it it's, but it, and it's almost too on the nose of the guy who doesn't know who, what he wants to do. So he kind of keeps changing things up. He was gonna go into law. Yeah, and like then he's like, well, now I'm gonna be a doctor, and like finding all these like. Like grad school things to do, I guess. I don't know. There, there is a world I like to live in. If, just follow me on this. That that this bar is where Coughlin was actually a bar back at. Like Co- Coughlin was working as a bar back here at St. Elmo's Fire, learning the ropes. Then, of course, Coughlin goes and starts his own bar, yeah. uh, and then p- passes everything he knows on to Tom Cruise's character in Cocktail, which is what? Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Come oh, on, what's his name? Cocktail. Dreams? Oh, what's Tom Cruise's character's name? Tom. Whatever, Tom. <laughs> it's Tom. But then I like to I like to believe that then of course um, that uh, uh, Kirby, you know, of course he he never goes to law school. He eventually goes and works at Cocktails and Dreams. With oh, Tom okay. Cruise. My note. That's at what I like to believe. This whole the, my note at this the whole ending to this was going to be. <laughs> no. I feel I feel like just down the street, Tom Cruise's bitch ass is ru- ruining people's lives at Cocktails <laughs> yeah. and Dreams. Fuck that guy. It was a Fuck couple years people. later, so he's not yet ruining their dreams. <laughs> yes. Yes. He's not ruining dreams yet. Okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> or, or giving them cocktails. Or giving them a... <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to let that go, are we? <laughs> Uh, then you move on. You get everybody in their home lives a little bit here. Uh, like you got uh, Kirby and Kevin living together in that. Uh, that 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 feels right to me. This yeah. kind of like shitty apartment where your couple of your buddies live together, kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I also read that apparently Emilio and Andrew McCarthy like actually moved in together. Oh, they did before the film so that they could kind of get like, used to uh, it. Cool. Prep the role. It seems like a weird thing that you have to like uh, method act about. I think it's more of them just being like, "You want to move? You want to party? Let's get some yeah. coke and you some wanna, bitches." You do coke and bitches all night long. <laughs> we are pretend the, like it's rolls. We are the brat pack, so we could just pull anyone we want. I have a question for you. They weren't the brat <laughs> the brat pack at this point, though, right? I think it was like right after Breakfast Club, and this came out, and, yeah, it, and it was like was really a New defined. York Times article or something, right? Mm-hmm. Like where someone 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 called the term. them the brat pack because yeah. he like hung out with them. It's like a, a really famous article, apparently, where. He kind of got in with these guys just to like okay. hang with them. And, Hunter and S. Thompson did. Yes, much. and he like very, very painted a bad picture of this group. <laughs> oh, like, is that right? Like, yeah, they suck. We're calling them the Brat Pack, and everybody's like, "All right, oh my god." Well, where so it, Ellie Sheedy and Judd Nelson, their character names are are whatever they are. <laughs> and uh, well, let's get them right. This is uh, Alec and Leslie. Alec and Leslie. Um, they're, <laughs> I mean, they're I'll living in AJ. Are Thank they, you. Are they <laughs> living in like a foreclosed village inn? I, what's dude, going on? What's on the wall? What? Yeah, it's like a huge Nike sign, dude. It kind of feels like it maybe used to be like a department store <laughs> that they yeah. that somebody bought the neighborhood and oh, they're they're is, making loft this apartments. This is fun and chic. Wee Let's you. move in here. Well, and and come on, put yourself. <laughs> in I want the, that wall. Is the that your problem? Crop. Uh, Ooh, here's a problem. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I do. I like the whole time I'm thinking it's like. I want this wall, and I and then I'm kind of like I kind of want everyone's wall. Like I want the <laughs> Billy Idol wall uh, too. You can't have that. Billy uh, Idol wall is cool. 
But no, I'm just like, yeah, I kind of want that. I want that. I want that wall. Okay, you got one, you guys. Um, Billy's jacket at the end. It was a cool. Which jacket. what jacket was it? It was like a leather jacket. Like the shoulders had like a more of a tan ish uh, kind of thing. Like yeah. it was worn a little bit, and then the rest was just kind of black leather. I miss my leather jacket. And I, I really want it back, so I'm taking that. You know what? We'll get to this scene a lot later, but I want the, I want the Polaroid for, photograph of <laughs> fucking uh, Kirby. And <laughs> where, where oh, they yeah. clearly were staring at the camera for the photo, Dude. but the photo is them looking off to no, the side. Nothing about it. Has <laughs> <laughs> That's why maybe it's a dream. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm just joking. Because see, because he's an idiot and he doesn't know how cameras work. <laughs> he doesn't know how cameras work. Oh yeah, but yeah, they're they're play, and it's so interesting because you show. You show Kirby and Kevin, this is how normally you would live out of college. Yeah. Even if you do get that big time job, you can't afford a place like this. So is is Alec, is his parents just like super rich, maybe? Which yeah, is why he he's says, kind of a shithead. He says money's not a problem like all uh, the time. I mean, yeah, I know he's got a job, but he's not gonna have a an, an insane high paying job. I bet his dad is a lawyer and like kind of okay. kinda is like get in the family business ish kind of thing, and then he is he yeah. destroys his own life by stalking he, Bieberman. <laughs> oh, wait, for Alec or Kirby? Kirby. Oh, Kirby. Oh, you're talking about Kirby now. We don't even know where Kirby lives, to, yeah. tell, you, to tell you the truth. No, Kirby no, lives Kirby, with Kirby Alec. lives, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Alec, Alec is this guy who, it's like, he. yes, he did work hard in like the politics game, or like got his degree for political science yeah, or whatever, right? But he's only getting ahead because he's probably got some sort of connection. Of course. His family has connections because he's also getting other people jobs, things like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like um, for both Billy and for uh, for Kerbo. Yeah. So he's he's definitely connected. It's not just all on his own merit. And so uh, uh, Demi Moore's character. uh, God damn it. Jules. 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 Gets. (laughs) <laughs> um, Kevin we'll McCarthy him. to go, uh, go over there. It's Kevin. It is Kevin. I got that one. <laughs> Gets Kevin to go over to her Kevin apartment McCarthy. just, just, uh, just to call him out by maybe being gay, right? Yeah, that was it. She just wanted to like be like, "Hey, it's cool." Say, you- "Hey, what's your deal? Why haven't you fucked me yet? <laughs> Are you gay? <laughs> Why haven't you ever made a pass at me? It's like, do you want me to like?" <laughs> You don't have to bang everyone that walks through the door. You really don't. Is that like, the secret? Like, if you don't make a pass on a girl, she'll eventually be like, "Hey, fuck me," and prove you're not gay. Yeah. Is that the? Uh, is the? It, did it, I just figure it I out? I think that's how it works. Well, in Kevin's, the eighties, Kevin's got it going. Then like, Kevin's in a good spot. Up. Yeah. I mean, he's. He, I mean, everybody's throwing themselves at at Kevin. Yeah. Let's Ron. Be real. Ron. Ron. Ron loves him. <laughs> Ooh. The the hooker. Yeah. Oh, you know, I love it. I bet you think strippers Please. like you too. Sex worker, sex, sex worker. worker. I, no, I, it's the eighties. Hooker, <laughs> hooker. Capital right. Back then, <laughs> there's cocaine. It's hooker. That fucking hooker. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's the eighties. You can say that. Yeah, it was just a different it time. Was, John, you're like, you're like, oh, you can't stalk <laughs> a woman. It was the eighties. It was the eighties. Okay. Like, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Back then, a face could seat five. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm the internet police. You can't do that anymore. Cancel this. This movie. <laughs> You're right. It was it was a more of a van type. You know what? Okay. I feel the movie's pretty progressive because yeah. they had they had a, a, a gay characters that they were trying to hook up with straight characters. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. All right. Yep. And Kevin was Good. like, "Yeah, if I was, I would." <laughs> you better fine. <laughs> because it's the '80s. And all, right. If, all right. And listen, right. if it is the '80s, then you have to talk about moments that would not happen today, right? When when Kirby's at the restaurant. And he and and uh, Dale comes to meet him. Oh, yeah. And the phone, like the, there's yeah. a phone sitting at the table that that Kirby's making phone calls on that is attached to a wire. Yeah. Right. Which means the phone had to be brought with a wire to the table. Yep. Which means that happens a lot, I guess. Which means there's probably a really long phone cord wire. It's she a told, fancy restaurant. Yeah. So she that's told the hospital where she was going to be because she had to. Yep. When you're on call. Exactly. Meant something different. Back do you then. think though? Do you think that Dale actually said, "Hey, listen, call call the restaurant at five thirty-five, <laughs> and I will." It, did that move like call she me and I'll, up, yeah. yeah, I'll either say I got to come or hey, no problem. Probably. 
<laughs> we saw one fucking movie together, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> she doesn't even remember what movie it was. Yeah, she uh, she she had something. She picked up a bad vibe real early in this meetup, yeah, and it, uh, it's, it's really it's, her fault for it, continuing to come around, though. It's shocking it. how yeah. her intuitions were correct. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> and she's like, "I'll give him, a, I'll give him a fourth chance." Yeah, okay. he's probably not that creepy. <laughs> you know, I think it's really kind of bullshit the way she just led him on. <laughs> it's like <laughs> she didn't. No. Like, no, like this is not that case in what any way. Is this Andy McDowell's? Is this her? Is this her? most beautiful moment she is stunning in this movie. yeah and you know what i my fiance pointed out to me that uh, her daughter's uh margaret qualley if you've seen her you've she was uh like the i don't know pussycat in uh uh once upon a time in hollywood i think that was her, her name oh was, shit she okay. around that's Brad her Pitt. daughter yeah and it, like especially uh annie mcdowell at this age looks just fucking like her i was like uh -huh. whoa it's shocking but yeah. yeah she's she's incredible i think she did go and kind of say like this movie kind of changed her career yeah. around she did, yeah so i mean it was like a big deal because they really did they really did try like they wanted to put her beauty on a pedestal in this role and they did man and and even like demi Moore would like was almost like like i almost like gasped when i saw it, when i realized that was demi Moore. i know she's like like just, just her uh um fuck uh billy um oh rob, rob, Lowe. rob Lowe, like all these people you're just like god you guys are attractive right. and this is and this is pre like doctored era right like this is just what they look like yeah and they were just stunning all of them were yeah like, demi was like just getting out of rehab when she yeah. did this movie, which yeah. is sad to, sad to hear. But There's some um, connections between her real life and this character. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. That's what makes it kind of a little sad for me. But yeah. uh, like Emilio and her started going out after this. I think is what yeah. I read. And Might yeah, I mean, man, fuck so. yeah, fucking you're the Rat Pack, man. Ooh. Might as well. Rat Pack. Brat Pack. Yes. The Rat Pack's the other one. Sammy yeah, Davis. Don't Sammy yeah. Davis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to know what what the Rat Pack was doing. Yeah, Billy, if Billy. you think the Brat Pack was bad. Billy definitely doesn't croon with that saxophone. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> out of tune ass. Well, uh, one thing we got to do point out is uh, Jules in this movie. She comes over and she pours absolute for them to drink. What okay, is that? yeah. What Th the? This is ridiculous. Why on earth are you drinking vodka when you can drink Cedar Ridge whiskey? Oh, Get thank you. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. That's what I, I was trying to un say. Unfortunately, the 80s, there was no good whiskey back then. That's true. That's whiskey true. has come around in, in the world. In America is probably the most popular spirit uh, uh, liquor of, of all time in the world at this point. And there is a company in our backyard named Cedar Ridge Whiskey that distills the best whiskey on the planet. We know this. Yeah. We know this, and we've been saying it, and we yeah. want you to know about this, that if you're having friends over late night, put that absolute away. Grab some Cedar Ridge. Go with the uh, go with the bourbon. Their their flagship bourbon that is perfect to make cocktails with, to make old fashions with, or maybe you grab the American Quintessential Single Malt because they're drinking that vodka neat. That's just disgusting. Yep. Why not Super drink weird. Quintessential Single Malt neat? Yeah. Maybe even just a little cube in there. Yeah. It's the best thing you've ever had. It's the best single malt on earth. Or you want to get fucking crazy? What what would have been like Slipknot's equivalent in Ooh, 1985? Like fucking crew, dude. Fucking dude. motley, motley crew, crew, dude. Motley, bro. Basically, if if, if, if Cedar Ridge was around <laughs> in 1985, <laughs> it would have been Hall and Oates. <laughs> Hall and Oates would have had their signature whiskey, <laughs> just like Cedar Ridge has with Slipknot, their number nine bottle, That's blending right. rye and bourbon together. You gotta check the them man out. Man eater blend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Go check them out. CedarRidgeDistillery.com. Get it at your local distiller or your local distributor. Get it at your local store. Ask them to order it in. If you can't, order it online at cedarridgedistillery.com. Just do it. Cedarridgedistillery.com. Cedarridgedistillery.com. I dare you. Scene two. So Alec reveals to Kevin that he cheated on Leslie. We see Wendy at her job before her, her and Billy attend a dinner at Wendy's house. Billy's performance at St. Elmo's is interrupted by Billy's wife and her date. So... She asks if uh, Kevin has ever fallen in love. You know, you ever been in love? Like, yeah, though? well, this is the this is the most disgraceful and saddest thing that I've ever heard. Like so, a, a girl that he liked when he was playing bongos in a band, bongos in a band, <laughs> left him for the bass auxiliary player, percussionist. Thank you. Congas left him for ones. the bass player <laughs> in the band, 
this uh, dude, the lowest on the totem this pole. This dude, I think he, I, it might be like a thing where it r- reminds me of myself a little uh, bit. Not that specific thing or anything, yeah, but right. where he's he is just so cynical about yeah. fucking everything and has like a little quirky joke about everything. I wondered if you related to that character, uh, at least it, the most it, of all of it them. It pissed me off the most, probably because of that reason. Like, yeah. I, I really don't take a lot of things seriously, and I have a joke about pretty much everything but i don't know man this pissed me off i'm like he's like look there's no such thing as love it's all like the hallmark shit and he's like shut up <laughs> oh Sean, sean's over here sitting and watching he's like god and then he just oh god is that what i've been doing to people oh, jesus <laughs> christ that is why it, like so things sorry. like this I just do put a mass text out to everybody <laughs> yeah. dude things like this do piss you off though because in the moment and he this this is what his character would do at twenty two years old, twenty three years old. This is exactly how this character would act. Yeah. yeah. But then you're you're thirty three years old and you're like, yeah, oh yeah. my! It's easy to look back and go, ah, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Shit, I'm sorry about that, dude. <laughs> and then uh, Alec comes in and says, like, "Yeah, I was, I've been banging chicks left and right, and she has no has no idea." Uh, Kevin can just hear them banging, probably, and, yeah. he, and he just kind of ashes into whatever they're making. I, but also, a little flavor. Well, yeah, I yeah. guess so. Uh, 80s flavor. Yeah. Um, but also, Alec is like, he's cheating on his on his girlfriend and is like trying to force her to get married to him. Is that going to make you faithful at all? Is is marrying somebody like be like, well, now now that I'm married, like, I don't have to fuck all the other chicks. It's the most it's the most like delusional, like narcissistic <laughs> thing that you can ever like put out. It's there. her fault that I'm cheating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really, if you really think about it, it's <laughs> it's her fault because I've been wanting to get married. I've been wanting to do the right thing. And all he you know that all he wants to do is get married because someone told him that his political career will advance if he if he has a wife and yeah. kids. Hundred like percent. He wants it. He wants the v- visage of like yes. the the family. You yes. Know? Mm-hmm. Well, and the, it's just the equivalent. This has been going on forever. It's the well, shit. My relationship sucks. If we could just get engaged, yeah. things will get better. Well, it still sucks. If we could just g- actually get to the marriage point, things will be better. It still sucks. Well, if we could just have a kid, that'll fix things. Yeah. It still sucks. Well, we should have another kid. Like it's just that line of like something will fix this. Yeah. yeah. And it never does. Yeah, you're just you're just waiting for something external to fix this this relationship, and the idea of like I'll quit banging other chicks when I get married, because apparently that's how it works. Yep. You are psychotic. That is the prescription to not bang other chicks. Yeah, marriage. Like what? Like what are you talking? about? That's the about? prescription to not bang any chicks. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Uh, that's a funny joke I heard. Then he go- yeah, that's a fun that's one. really good. That's a fun one. <laughs> then he goes and gets uh, D- Demi Moore's character um, out of this gangbang thing what? going on. And like, because Alex the best. And like, even as he's leaving, she's like, I love you. She's like, if you did, you'd marry me. Okay. Uh, there are There are certain scenes where you're just like, you know, you could have gotten rid of this scene to maybe give me more character development. Yeah. Right? Like this, I still don't understand what the what the Arab gangbang scene is. Like it could it's, completely be taken it, out. It, of no, it actually did nothing to no. me. Because if they were trying to show how good of a guy Alec is, it, it would be it would be fine, but he's not a good guy and they <laughs> never show that for the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> if it wants to show out of, how out of control Jules is, like we already know that. <laughs> yeah, we're we're pretty much on, on with that one. The already. minute we saw her, we're like, she's fucking crazy. Yeah. You know, like we knew that right away. So we get into this kind of Wendy talk or uh, a little bit more of, of Wendy's character, who is, you yeah. know, the least shitty of all of them. I mean, she's not even really shitty. I, I think she's just got the best head on her shoulder of all this group of friends. Yeah. And I like her arc way more than anybody because she's actually got one. Like, she's, you know, True. trying to, like, strike out of being, like, this uppity rich family. She wants to go out and go out on her own, get her own place and everything. I totally, I totally get that. <sighs> you, no? The, well, I, I just think... There is a point where you're, you're you well I just I want to get out of it. It's like I the, it's hard to explain <laughs> because the the word for this is privilege basically, right? Yes. <laughs> so, but there is a point where it's like, look, you're in this position that you you kind of need to like like why you want to go your own way and everything, but you're also putting a lot of stress on a lot of other people just so you can Go it your own way. I don't know. It's, Who? it's like her family. Well, yeah, like like it's stressing out her dad, like her friends, like she's like not really she's not helping herself in any way. She's trying to do all this stuff by the by helping all these other people. Like when she's doing the check thing, 
Yeah. Well, our job really here is to, you know, help you get onto your on your feet so you can get off of welfare. It's like, just give me my fucking check. And it's like, okay. Like, if she's she's not in a position to help herself, then how is she in a position to help other people? Yeah. She, I don't know. That's my viewpoint on it. I'm just more interested in, in the other characters. Like, I don't well, know what it is. Sure. <laughs> Wendy just seems so out of place in this movie to me. Like, and I don't know if that was on purpose. I don't know if that's... The actresses, just just the way she she looked compared to everyone else. Like, I don't know if that was a conscious choice because there is a like, I don't want to be that way, but there's a, a major difference between her and the rest of them. Yeah, they downplay her a lot. They they really do. And I, I guess she was pregnant during the movie. Yeah, so she, already that, had, she already had like two other kids, geez, yeah. you know, and and I don't understand. I'm going to be fucking vain here. I don't understand. Billy, what Billy and her were even doing together. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it actually makes no sense. Billy's married with a child and fucks everything that he sees. Yeah. Because every woman wants him. But he's like, yeah, but Wendy. You're like, what? Well, it's because it's, as soon as she mentions she's a virgin, he, he's like, he's got fucking blood in his eyes. Yes. I know. <laughs> blood in his shit. eyes and then also money. Yeah. Okay, it, it, okay. She's, she's, and so, you know, he's... Teasing basically a, a, an absolute tease to her, and in the process, getting rent money and whatever other yeah. peripheral benefits. And then, it, yeah, he's just being a shitty person around her. Oof. Yeah, he's shitty. It's like they're friends, but like, f- like friends with like uh, fringe benefits. But they've never, I mean? they've like, clearly never even uh, yeah. like kissed or anything, right? Like, that I don't think they've ever done anything together. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem like it. Because even though he, they sort of play it off like they were on a date or they were in a car or something, yeah. with, at the beginning, and that's why I say it's like they're friends who are just like really close friends, but then and like when they go to dinner at her family's, yeah, like it's another thing. Like even then, they don't even really commit to like boyfriend girlfriend. No, thing. yeah, and even like I will admit that this dinner scene is kind of funny. Like his little things, yeah. you know, like where'd you guys meet? Prison. <laughs> like I like the whispering mom thing. Yeah. That's yes. that's a funny bit. I there, really do is. enjoy that. I think, and that's the thing. Rob Lowe plays this character extremely well. One hundred percent. Like I, I have to give him credit yes. on this. Like he's kind of perfect for it, guys. Yeah, like, yeah. It's a shitty character, but yeah. that's why he's so good at he's doing so it. So damn good at it. And he's like, he is reckless. And I think that they do a good job skirting this of him being a shitty person, but him also just being, like you say carefree there's a difference between carefree and reckless yes. you know and he is a little bit more carefree but then it just turns into recklessness once he gets going but oh, he's on the roof wow what, uh, what an edgy guy yeah. oh my gosh well and then and then like i don't again with the character <laughs> development shit it, is it like do do we know it does he like want to be a musician because yeah. because he carries his saxophone Dude, around. You're so right. Yeah, we don't even know. We that. don't even know. Does does he like? Is this band like his like number one thing? And he's like wants his band to get big. We didn't even know he was in a band until we get to this Halloween party. Is this just like this a, a fun Halloween movie? By the way, it, turns yeah. out it turns out it's a Halloween movie. Is Sorry, th- is, no, is this just a one off <sighs> show, or is this like his main passion in life? I, like we don't know. We have nothing, but I'll tell you what, man. Something about Joel Schumacher <laughs> and saxophones. <laughs> loves it. He did Man's Lost Boys too, it. and he fucking loves saxophones. He's a saxophonist. I think he was going all in. He's like, dude, saxophones are going to be in music <laughs> from here on out. It's like it, it, the midnight. Thank you, the midnight, for coming back around yeah. and bringing us saxophone and, music and Viagra Boys. Be like, but it's Should, it's saxophone is great when used sparingly. <laughs> Not a solo over the entire fucking song. <laughs> He's like, Let's rock! Yeah! <laughs> if we were on a train to go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> All right. By Listen, the way, there's talk. Jeremy's laughing that little bit right there. Jeremy's our uh, Jeremy's uh, here. guest producer guest today. Guest producer right. today. You know him. <laughs> Which means I'm gonna get weird. I'm gonna. Br- I'm not gonna punch a face of anyone you actually see in the movie. This is the first. Okay. I'm punching the sound guy at the bar <laughs> for putting the saxophone way too fucking high in the mix. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear saxophone that loud in a mix. I just so uh, I'm punching him. I'm walking over and being like, "Hey man, uh, what's with the faders there?" Bam! I'm just gonna punch him. <laughs> Pop. Pop. Well, especially uh, because his sax sounds like a fucking kazoo. It does. It's so bad. <laughs> the, it, the, uh, it's either that thing 
is either the biggest tenor sax I've ever seen, or Rob Lowe is way smaller than I ever thought. <laughs> because yeah, well, that is see. not a tenor sax. Let's, okay? let's check it out. If he's like 5'6", that's like perfect actor height. Rob Lowe height. Ah, he says 5'10". So. Oh, okay, ten. cool. That's good for him. Oh, that's that's average. That's hot guy height. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does it qualify? Yeah. So he makes his whole Kay. scene when his wife comes in, right? And like she's got... A, a boyfriend or like you know just like a date with her yeah and he's like get, get your hands off my wife and <laughs> makes this whole fight and like it carries out into the by the way the bar the bar owner is the uh adam sandler he's in a bunch of adam sandler movies yeah, um he's the co he's the coach the indecipherable voice coach in water boy yes, yes. <laughs> yeah uh, this was his first role apparently <laughs> oh too. really yeah it's cool to see Clark him. something i'm gonna look at his name up because i need to know his, 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 his but they name. the fight goes out to the uh, street and everything and then like after a while they're like oh, i still love you and then they make up it's like we didn't need any of that either yeah what what was any of Th that there's none of this he doesn't give a fuck about his wife or his kids but is it just the the jealousy of like he, he can't stand that a woman doesn't want him kind of a thing or like it's what it seems you're ruining my big concert <laughs> blake clark is his yeah. name and by the way you you hear him say in there like like uh billy's fired so He's either yeah. like a house musician, maybe. Okay. That's or that, the band, the band fired is like for the ruining the gig. Yeah, it could be. And it, we it's, got this muscle guy that's coming up the ranks <laughs> on saxophones right now. He takes his shirt off. He oils them up. We're gonna give him a try. He's coming in from uh, San. What was it, <laughs> well, <laughs> dude? What Santa Clara? Yeah. What if? What if that's the same band? What if the band from here moved to California <laughs> and got a new saxophone player yeah. for for yeah. Lost Boys? Yeah, that that is just concrete. Done. Should, I don't should care. we should should we get a shirt going that just says <laughs> Joel Schumacher is a saxist? <laughs> <laughs> Should we do <laughs> Yes. What the fuck? Why are you even asking this? I just wonder. <laughs> Don't ask stupid questions, man. You're gonna get stupid answers, bro. Joel, well, Joel is a sexist. A People be like, I, I don't know if I'm offended or not. I don't understand. Come on. God. Well, then then hey, fan theory to go with this. I have a theory that the date, her date, uh Billy's wife's date. His name is actually uh, Rick Nevin. In, in, if you look at the credits, it just says boyfriend or okay. date. But okay. I want to propose that his name is actually Rick Nevin, who is a lieutenant in the Navy. Uh -huh. His call sign being Hollywood. Oh, he is no. an he is an F fourteen Tomcat pilot, one of the best in the world. Who's just got a couple weeks off? He was in town. He was at a hotel. Met this chick. Went to the bar to hang out. That is Hollywood from Top Gun. Yeah. Okay. His name is Whip Tubley uh, in real life. <laughs> Whip Tubley. Dude, that's the best name I've ever Whip fucking heard. Whip Tubley in my life. is his real name, and I want to propose that that is actually Hollywood. I just, like it. Just hanging out, like he's he's about ready to go to Top Gun school. And he's like, I got a couple weeks off. I'm just gonna go bang some yeah. '80s sluts. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Especially ones married with kids. <laughs> and actually, and I fucking I, hookers. I had to look it up. Dude, what do you think his Halloween costume was? Uh, no, I, uh, like literally, I can't tell if if. This whole movie leaves <laughs> Halloween at, at all because there's another party in this movie where uh, yeah, Judd Nelson, you know, fucks with Kevin or whatever. Everyone's dressed in a costume, it seems like, but it's just the 80s. It's, it's true. It's very it bad. It was Halloween it's for weeks. It's just a Coke-fueled 80s yeah. fever if, dream. If we can pretend, if we can pretend that, you know, maybe the years were a little different when these movies came out, I want to argue that uh, that Hollywood's costume was actually Bill Pullman in Spaceballs. <sighs> Because oh, he yeah, looked, he's yeah, got yeah. like this brown leather jacket on. Okay, I want, yeah. that's what I want to argue. Uh, We're moving time around now. Topical. I'm down. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, just like, uh, the, the, one more thing. Uh, his his wife with his his, his Felicia baby's mama. Um, sh the only thing I've ever seen her in is uh, Near Dark by Catherine Bigelow. It's a, a great vampire movie that we should do someday. So anyway, okay. next week. All right. Fine. Well, let's move on to scene three. So the women confront Jules about her affair and reckless spending. Kirby takes a job working for Mr. Kim, a wealthy Korean businessman, and invites Dale to a huge party at Mr. Kim's house. At the party, Alec announces that he and Leslie are engaged, upsetting her. She confronts him about her suspicions of his infidelity, and the two break up. These people are the shittiest people on the entire planet. Which people? All of them. This whole cast of, of friends... Um, they go to a homeless shelter <laughs> because it sounds like an adventure. That sounds like it'd be fun. And then 
Jules <laughs> is literally fucking talking about like alligator bags next to uh, what's her name, oh, Myra. Yeah, Myra, who's just like literally looking at her like, <sighs> I've I've fight tooth and nail every day out on the streets, and she's talking about alligator bags. Yes, I used to be hot. She's she looks horrified, hey. <laughs> and she should be. Like, why are these people here? Yeah, I'll Get tell you out. what. The etiquette though in this homeless shelter, there's no order. Like people are just budging in line yeah. and kind of being like, "What's I want?" Food? Like, if I there was gonna be a punchable face, it was gonna <laughs> it was be the, the guy, guy <laughs> behind yeah. them the whole time. Yes. It was just like, "Excuse me, I I was trying to get in here. Oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to cut the line. I, I haven't eaten right in away. weeks. I haven't eaten in weeks. Get in Still line, punching sir. you, man. <laughs> Order, okay? Get in line. This is Actually, real shit. Life. Did Did you guys get a punchable face? I we moved on from that. Sorry. I think that's gonna. I'm gonna make I that mine. I punch the sound guy. Okay, yeah, that's who you're that's punching. Be mine. Sound guy. Yeah. Uh, I am punching jewels. Jewels. Yeah. Oh straight no. Up. Yeah. Just straight up. Just, Damn. Yeah. Just cunt punch. Just. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're equal opportunity punchers. We here. are. You are, and you gotta be. And, and especially... that's fun because it's a character. That's, that's fun. fun. It's, it's it is satire. <laughs> I don't actually mean that I want to punch a woman. Okay. Wow. I don't actually want to punch a homeless guy. <laughs> I do want to punch the sound guy. <laughs> no, he really does. Yeah. He has, they des- I've they do it. it. I've seen they do deserve it. it. <laughs> I don't want to actually punch a, a yes. very hungry and down on his luck homeless man. Like that's that's not my ambition also, in life. Also, to me more sounds like the frog kid from Little Rascals. <laughs> <laughs> he smokes a lot of cigarettes. Let, let's go eat at the homeless shop. That, coke, that coke is doing a number on her God. throat. It's hot. It's, <laughs> <laughs> you like it? Yeah, okay. I do. <laughs> but hey, we gotta switch to Kirby real quick because when he when he is stalking her in the rain, looking through the window, all you have to do is change the music to this, and this is a fucking horror movie, dude. You're right. I, I'm, I'm I have a note here. I said I want you to I want you to cut this POV shot, especially the POV with the Halloween music. Like John Carpenter, oh my god! Because it's it's POV and you can hear him fucking breathing too, and he like <laughs> oh, it's shit. it's straight up Halloween, dude. And then what? At what point? Like Annie McNall's character here, uh, what what's her name? Um, uh, Dale. 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 Dick Dale. Like he just he just <laughs> he, he just came him. Dick Dale. He just came into this fancy party soaking wet. Yeah. Uh, into where he was not invited. That he stalked her to get to, and then made a huge. Scene talking about I get obsessed, and I'm then obsessed. I'm obsessed, and then what in the world makes her then be like, "Well, come with me back to my apartment." Yeah, and that, <laughs> dude, I and, and I I hate to I hate to bring this up, but like Kirby, Kirby is going to be in jail in in ten years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because okay, <laughs> so, so he listen. better get laid, or otherwise he's going down a bad path. Yeah. There's a kid that went to high school and college with me that uh, is currently serving a life a sentence in prison. He did some fucking terrible stuff and watching this movie i was like that's him like this the the weird obsessions that he was getting i was like that was him in high school and college and it creeped me the fuck out because this dude did some shitty shitty stuff and is serving a like consecutive life sentence in prison for what he did Wow! and like i'm just watching kirby being like this is not this is the worst character of the movie yeah it, it truly is. I mean, like, he smells her pillow too, and like it's gets what, the fuck? what the fuck, dude. I, I I I'm thinking in my mind now. I'm like, is this movie a joke? Is this like is Joel Schumacher in on these shitty people? Is he? Is, is, if he is, is, that's he, brilliant. is he like picking people that he knows and being like, they suck so bad. I'm gonna make characters out of yeah, them. Yeah, or is like he doing or that? is he commenting on like the '80s culture of like the Brat Pack or something yeah. like that? You know, I don't know, but like I really don't think so. Um, but like even even then, like he's in her apartment. And then uh, he's like, well, it's all about money to you. Is that it? Is that right? Well, I'm going to leave. He's like, and why are you he- leaving, dude? You're in her fucking apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. What the fuck? You, you made, made it. it. She's fucking awesome. She like, literally, like, she just she just showed you, like, she's a real person. <laughs> you're, you're, what is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> like, you, you made it. You made it to the Mecca. Like, and you know what? You can. And her You're, roommates here, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like maybe. <laughs> Let's go. May, hey, they, they, maybe maybe they hate each other just enough to bang the same guy <laughs> at, at the same at time. The same time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Like, where are you going? <laughs> yeah, like he leaves and he's like, "Oh, it's all about money." And then, oh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna act like I have a bunch of money and shit. It's like, dude, you were there, man. <laughs> you were there. Like, if you had an, an ounce of normal to you. Which, Which I don't, does it not. doesn't look like it at all. But if you did, like 
just hang out the rest of the night. Maybe have some drinks. Maybe you know, see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, you were there. You were there, man. Like <laughs> somehow, somehow, you showing up the way you did didn't scream. Somebody, please get him out of here. <laughs> instead, it, instead, it screamed. I should show you where I live. It That's what this it can't <laughs> get much worse than this. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. Like, I don't think I have that many knives in my apartment that are easily, like, readily available. I think oh. I'll just show you where I live. Yeah, it, dude, it's, it's, I, I think he, I think, I think his character is just completely unforgettable. Like, I'll take any of their actions. I'll take, I'll take Alex infidelity and him, him, like, b- blaming it on a friend at a party yeah. and kicking his girlfriend out. I'll take that. I'll take, I'll take Billy's fucking just, terrible terrible advances on on women that he's making this i'll take any of that over kirby yeah i mean all of that is shitty behavior but this is psychotic this like, is yes. straight up this is as he said obsessive behavior that's <laughs> yeah. not okay I get obsessed i'm <laughs> obsessed <laughs> like ah Emilio, you geez, owe me bro. this Duh. you owe you me owe you, me. Lo- you <laughs> looked <laughs> at me you owe me <laughs> I took you to see a Woody Allen movie <laughs> six years ago. You owe me. He's like that. That actually makes so much sense. It's Woody Allen. It's, you know what? Now I get Gross. where these are coming from. He watched a lot of Woody Allen Ugh. movies. Uh, no, I, I do think that it, it is like the whole time. I think it's just what we're obviously getting at here is like most of this is just uncomfortable to watch, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't see anything else other than that. It's just like, wow, this is uncomfortable. Well, yeah. even more uncomfortability where Billy goes back to school, like we talked about in the <laughs> beginning of this, where it's like, never do that. Never, ever do that. Oh. And they're like, yeah, you think I can like get a job on campus so I can re- relive my golden days? And he's like, well, yeah, man, we need you to get some drugs for us and we shit. We get us good drugs. Like, yeah, well, no one accepts me. He's like, yeah, because they're just a party people, you know? Yeah. And then he meets Felicia and his kid <laughs> there who are just there. <laughs> they're like, well, we can live here too, right? <laughs> and... He's Perfect. Like, Don't you give up on me? You know I'm. I'm gonna make some changes. And he says, uh, "You're not gonna believe how out of hand it's gonna be." He's like, "That doesn't sound actually very reassuring at, no. at all." That sounds the opposite. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sounds the opposite. Of what we're just <laughs> it's trying to be talk out about. of hand. Yeah. I, I would like a grasp on this, actually, Billy. It's, dude, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be so. I'm gonna be so like straight and proper on this. Like it's gonna get out of hand. Billy, it really, it sounds like you, you're like. Out of hand sounds unhinged. No, like it's it's like you aren't even going to be able to control how good I'm going to be. See, I still I really <laughs> it doesn't sound responsible. Like this doesn't. No, believe me. Like I mean it in the we best w- way possible. We want control. This is gonna. This is just gonna be absolutely insane. How 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 good our life is about to get. You won't even be able to imagine it. See, I do believe you that it's going to be out of hand, but I I tell you, I don't want that. Like, <laughs> That's not what we want. You're not listening to me. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> Uh, and AJ, you can chime in on this. Like, I think a lot about how we, we both had our first kids later on in life, you know, and like, I can't imagine I, you hear stories of people that just abandon their kids or, yeah. or you've got an example like Billy in here. That's just like, he literally doesn't think at all of his kid. Right. And I cannot imagine what that would be like. But then it makes me think of like, would it? Would it be different if if you had had a kid at at age twenty one, twenty two? Is it is it is that selfishness not able to get out of your body where you're like, but it's about me? I've moved into like I don't give a shit about myself anymore. It's all about my kids. So is that because I'm older, or is that just just shitty people? Like uh, some people are different. You know, somebody said to me one time that um, because like I think I've even said it on here. Like a lot of people will say. The moment my kid was born and we locked eyes, <gasps> my life changed. <laughs> and it's like, that might be very true for some people. For me, it wasn't necessarily that way. It was like an ongoing process. Like, well, and like yeah. See like, if I like him. Yeah, like hanging out and like <laughs> Six hold, month holding policy. my son <laughs> and like, you know, watching him grow up and seeing like, and these things. And you're right. You're just like, no, like how, how on earth do I ever spend another moment like not having him in the back of my head somebody said to me one time it's like you know i think that there's an inherent like sometimes people need something that bad or that or bad like that that big to change behavior okay and people some people some people need the shock and some people don't some people are already good they're good people and i don't need to be like (gasps) It changed my life. Uh, well, some people didn't need to have their lives changed. They just, it's great that this addition has come along. That's true. That's true. And, uh, and for like, you have Billy, who's obviously just 
as we've said, an irresponsible human being that he, this is the last thing he wants to do is slow down. Yeah. And yeah. it would be much more important for him to be able to like have this kid in his life like more often probably if if that was his goal, you yeah. know? They could have very easily just avoided the wife and kids. Thing. I think they probably like, could. It, it really, yeah. it doesn't pay off at all. In this no, it, I, he's well, like, yeah. whatever. They'll be fine on their own. He straight up, he does leave them. He literally <laughs> he leaves. Does. He's like, I'm going to move away. He's yeah. like, so I, that we never see each other. He he he's like making all those decisions of like, you know what? They're going to have another movie that's called Saint Elmo's Fire's Kid, and it's going to be like about, oh, I didn't really know my dad. Ah. And he's gonna. It's gonna be the this the next story of a kid who. Well, tell me about my dad. It's like, well, he was a reckless son of a bitch who played the saxophone. Fucking great at the saxophone. It's like, <laughs> I, I only heard the saxophone part. Uh, saxophone? Can I get one? <laughs> well, you know, you know why this movie's called Saint Elmo's Fire, though, right? Uh, because of a wheelchair. Well, yeah, because of course that <laughs> that and also uh, the college that he went to was called Saint Elmo's, and they oh. they do that annual burning of the leaves on the street. Oh, where they yeah, where they roll yeah. around and play tackle football next to burning leaves. Oh yeah, yeah that's Saint right. Almost fire. They call it Saint Almost Fire Day. Right, Saint Elmo F- Almost Fire. Hey, we're gonna burn all the leaves. Come on, let's roll around in the ground and get drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do, you've never done. No, I forgot. You guys didn't go to college. Uh, you guys didn't go uh, to college. You guys didn't have that experience. Uh, you didn't have a. You guys didn't have a homeless guy living on a mattress in your backyard that you hit baseballs at. <laughs> what? <laughs> That was in the movie. What? It was a deleted scene. You didn't see that? No, I didn't. No. Fuck. Are you? <laughs> so any of this, Mike just this told part... us about his life. <laughs> hey, if you're not on Patreon, I will tell you all the stories about the homeless guy that lived in our backyard that we hit baseballs at. But you got to listen on the Patreon episode. Uh, all right, man. <laughs> or cancel it because you hate me. Oh. <laughs> but you don't say. know the full story. I think you need to wear the Joel <laughs> Schumacher hat. <laughs> Like this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, the Joel Schumacher hat confirms you are also a saxist, <laughs> <laughs> a homeless hater. No, that was uh, AJ. I think, was it? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> you're right. A punchable face is a lot different from oh, actually oh, hitting baseballs AJ, at somebody. Oh, I could punch the face of a poor homeless guy, but I can't hit a baseball at him. Yeah, well, I'm not that good at baseball. You're the one who showed off your skills. <laughs> All right, let's move on to scene four. So Dale skips the party, and Kirby drives to the ski lodge to find her. They invite him to stay the night. Jules gives Billy a ride home, and Billy makes a pass at her. The next morning, as Kirby leaves the lodge after kissing Dale, Leslie goes to Kevin's apartment, and they share a passionate evening. So Emilio uh, is... Um, <laughs> it's Kirby, please. Yeah, Kirby. Let's not taint his, yeah, yeah. Boy, gets, his name. He gets this job for this <laughs> Mr. rich Kim. guy, Mr. Kim, yeah. right? And... Uh, like this would be funny. Like he, like he's going. Mr. Kim's going out of town, and he's like throwing a party for his friends. Yeah. Well, basically just for Dale, um, and like it's gonna ransack the house. And Limo Jr. like, "Don't do it. He's gonna be back. He's gonna yeah. be back. well. He's not gonna be back till Sunday, so everything's fine." Like this would be funny in like an Animal House type movie, but yeah. this is. This is just insane, and uh, just like every other decision made in this movie, uh, irresponsible. Correct. Yeah. No one cares. Yep. About all anything. No. No. Like and, and so. That's the other thing is like Alec is though is is in fact like a, a, an absolute piece of shit. But then at the same time, at least he is trying to help like his friends like kind of better themselves. Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll get you a job. I can help you out." This is the same job that he gave to Billy. <laughs> yeah. His don't credibility you think Mr. would have been like, "I don't want any more of your suggestions." <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm not going to go for a strike three. I think I'm just done dealing with you. I feel like a lot of his favors and a lot of his like credibility is just getting dumped down the toilet by all of his friends and like all the other professional relationships that Alex has his credibility is out the door guys oh, yeah. I mean <laughs> first off Billy's in there like banging his what wife or girlfriend we, who, or whoever who, they, they don't even like who is that he's banging somebody in that guy's hot I tub. thought it was the limo driver Oh, maybe oh, that could like be. they're both, but it's like, but that doesn't even make sense. No, and like, she seemed she seemed either really stunned that a guy was there that she didn't know, or really stunned that that's Mr. Kim. That, that here. was the yeah. guy. And, yeah. But they're like, man, we don't talk about that. True. No, nope, we don't allude to that. Um, and then we throw the party, and this is just another reckless choice by Kerbo. Turbo. I don't even like that. <laughs> they call him Kerbo the Turbo because he's just always going. I don't know. Uh, he he throws this party specifically for her, 
When, by the way, she said, I don't think I can make it. I don't know if I can go. I, I, I don't know. Which we'll, is code for I'll be there and we'll fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And Kirby's <laughs> That's what he mind. heard in his head. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> hell yeah. And if by chance I don't show up by my, you know, but something else happening that where I cannot show up, it means you should come look for me. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Because we need to fuck. Uh, he, he said... Mommy's making a PB salad. Needs some of Kerbo's <laughs> own dressing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to pass this up because when Kirby then goes to her apartment, yeah, and the roommates like go away, and he's like, "No," he basically says, "No," because you don't know what I'll do. You, yeah. you're Dude. gonna, you're gonna tell me where she is because you don't know what I'm capable of or what I'm gonna do. Well, how? That those are the moments where I'm like, they're like. Are you really writing these lines, Joel Schumacher? Yeah, like, I know. In not in not to be funny. Like, this is psychopathic. This is like unbelievable. Even in the eighties, I cannot fathom that this was like the audience members were just like watching this movie, being like, "Yeah, that's okay." <laughs> You're right. That's how he's going to get his information. But yeah, yeah. Well, he's basically saying, "I will kill both of you if she doesn't fuck me tonight." <laughs> that is what that's he's saying. What he said. It, it, <laughs> 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 Straight up, <laughs> Mike turns and looks at me. He's like, "That's what he said." Comment on this, I'm AJ. On Sha- you know what? I'm on Sean's side now. <laughs> you got to defend this movie even further. You, I thought I liked it. Can you? Can you go in? Like, think about. <laughs> he takes this car, and now he's he's driving up like a dark, snowy road, <laughs> and put the Shining music behind that oh now. My God. Oh, like, oh, oh my God! Like, oh my God! And you're just like, God. oh no. It gets bad. It gets real dark here, guys. I'm just saying. And you have this scene with with like this is the part of the movie where you're just like nothing good is happening, right? No. You've got you've got Billy and Jules. Billy just being the ultimate piece of shit in it's this Jeep with scene Jules. after scene, man. Where in, in the this is the worst is, moment for Billy. right? Absolutely. This is just like she she needed a friend tonight. This is like the, the most human line I've heard in this movie so far. She you know, needed, and that the I, I this might be the line of the movie for me. Demi Moore's character saying, "You break my heart." Yeah. Then again, you break everyone's heart. Like I was just like, God damn. That, woo. That hurt. and like it looked like it affected him. I think. I think this might have been the moment that helped Billy, maybe. I don't fucking know. But uh, if it helped him at all, he would have stayed with Felicia and been a dad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think so, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, it, there, it gets to be this like really, really tough thing to watch. It's almost like we're getting into this like third act of the movie that everything is coming like to a head. You know what I mean? And everything is just like falling apart for almost everybody in this. Well, see, he arrives to the cabin where she's at, and he's like, "Get open this fucking door!" Basically, you know. And a guy comes out. Who the fuck are you, dude? Yeah. Like, I would be, I'd be brandishing an arm. If, Pick, if put I yourself in his shoes. Like, yeah, like he. That might be her boyfriend. That might just be like, hey, like he went to a lot of trouble. They're kind of starting to date. Picture that happening to she where she's like, yeah, it's this guy, like one on one date with him. He's like, he's been showing up everywhere. Then imagine being that guy ha- having to fall asleep in the other room <laughs> while this fucking <laughs> psychopath is sleeping in the living room. Yeah. I'm not going to sleep. He's just pouting in the other room. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I got yeah, your pajamas. Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing his pajamas. What is he a fucking doctor? He's like, you want a glass of warm milk? <laughs> no. No. No, I don't. Do you have cookies? <laughs> I'm not and falling you, asleep. All you could hear, like, and that's honestly, he's sitting there like, like cool Ethan in the other room. He's like, <laughs> we're in her place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Or else you're the guy who's sitting, who's in there probably with Dale. And all you can hear in the other room is. <laughs> 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 he's, he's looking you around okay, the room. Kirby, Kirby yeah. are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm not c- I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around the room yeah. for the strands of her hair to make fun of Dale. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and then they and then uh, they <laughs> then they provide this this like satisfying moment <laughs> to be like, hey, it was all worth it, Kirby. Look, persistence paid off. Yeah. Cause you all you have to do is kiss her, and now yeah. she's gonna be like, You're right, I do want Kirby. Think you can't. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's not okay. And maybe, maybe because there was a, a, you know, we're getting better in modern society about knowing that these things are not acceptable. Yeah. Maybe these types of scenes in movies, like told 
males that like, no, it's fine. Like, look, it'll work out. Like, do you ever think about that? There are so many instances where like a creep like finally gets the girl. Yeah. And persistence pays off. And like you go, okay, like, yeah, you don't got to keep going, you know? Well, it was a different time back then, Mike. Time. You didn't have all these tinders and yeah. fire starters. How was supposed to meet a woman? <laughs> yeah, these kindling apps. Yeah. You know, you, you got, it's that back then. You had to pursue a young lady to court her, and uh, and then then she then she appreciated you. Well, you had to do. You had to like literally like he did, pick one and then go uh, kiss her, and then she's yours. Yeah. yeah, that's what happens. Basically, you create this kind of Stockholm syndrome thing. Yeah, uh, of you know, uh, and love bomb them until. They they fall in love with you, then you can just neg them the rest of the way into your arms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there you go. But I I will as much as I want to talk shit about that. I I laughed out loud when he goes later, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, fucking, I was like I was like you're right. I love you again, Honestly, man. too, man. I got it. I lost respect for him. I lost respect for him when he was like, let's take a picture of you two, huh? Yeah, that'd be fun. No. You meet the boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Let me get a picture of you. Yeah, yeah. All right, put your arm around her. You're come lucky, on. You're All lucky right, I right. let you stay come on, here. get in close. All right, come on, touch her boob with like your you elbow. Care. Like she's, care. she's like, he'll freeze out there. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I, like, look, We'll call the police, and yeah. they can come get his ass. Oh, he could fuck. be real warm in jail. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah. I think that'd be just fine. He'll get plenty of love there. Oh, God. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Kevin and uh, what's her fucking name? Who cares? <laughs> Ju- Ju- I'm Leslie or Jules? Or Leslie. Or Leslie. So they, Leslie. Uh, we didn't talk they, a lot about Ali Sheedy in this. Um, yeah. I don't think she's very Sheedy compared to the rest of them. Uh, but no? What, what okay. What, what did you just do? Just what, <laughs> is that a word? Come on. I'm going to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> Sheedy. It's her last name, you. <laughs> yeah, but no, but like you're you're using it as a, you're using it as like an adjective. Yeah, I wonder. It doesn't mean like, anything. Okay, well let me try again. I don't think anyone. I don't think she's as shitty. Do you think she's anyone's one? alley? Jesus Christ! Give like it. Put no. on the Schumacher hat. Yeah, put, no, put I'm not putting on the Saxon hat. Put the fucking hat on. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm on Sean's side. I was going to defend this movie with you. Now I'm like, I don't even what like it. What are you talking about? We, we bring it real back in here now. Come on. We're, All having, right. we're having fun. Look, okay? Kevin finally gets to fuck. It's this is great. great. Okay, what am I on? What am I on? A segue. Here we go, guys. And, and so now what, what we're talking about is Leslie. All right. How do you feel about Leslie as far as the shitty behavior goes? Leslie's shitty behavior? Yeah. You think she's shitty? That's what I'm trying to get across using a fun pun with her name, but <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I get it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, like, uh, she's, Leslie's the most, like, I think she's the most normal character in this whole thing. I don't know. <laughs> I, like, she does go and bang Kevin. Good. It, it is revenge. But at sex, the same time, but- you're kind of like, I mean, yeah, I get it. Go get it. Yeah. Let's go. I, I, I get revenge sex for sure, but maybe not with, like, maybe. The, <laughs> like every other decision in this movie, it's a little irresponsible to bang Kevin. You know? what, then like, what's, yeah, where's the revenge friend. if you're not banging a friend? <laughs> well, <laughs> where, where is this? I'm going to cut him deep. Yeah. Oh, it's just some guy I met. Yeah. It's your best friend. It's her best friend. Uh, yeah. That's true. She's, she she really got him. It was yeah. a great move. She they did it multiple times. It was awesome. It, well, so there you, there you go. And there, there you have it with their conversation they have. And... He says you slept with with him, and where she's like, and you've slept with many, countless like nameless faces or whatever yeah. is the way he puts it, yeah. and it's like, yeah, it's still shitty, you idiot. Okay, if it's if it's your friend, it equals one, but if it's someone if it's someone you don't know, it equals point two five. Yeah. Oh. So four nameless uh, people you don't know equals one best friend. Right? Oh, I see. Yes. I see. Well, if, he was only on his third too. So yeah, like, see? it's not really even. One. Oh, it's not even that bad. Not I even. see. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. What the fuck? But it is. But <laughs> like, it is very interesting though that you you they play on this well that Kevin has been fantasizing about her for so long. Yeah. That he finally gets it, and he is just like love bomb. Like he is so See, deep down the hole. Like it's it is yes, he's way down the hole. It's like the I think the reason like he hasn't found love or you know a, a, like a real girlfriend is because he falls way too hard, way too fast, just like right here. You know, yes. um, 
we've all been there. I relate to that for I sure. I relate to that. I relate like, to well, that I finally, sure. I finally got her, so we're in love. Yeah, like dude, we kiss, so it's it's final. Like we're yeah. gonna spend the rest of our lives. Together. I called my mom already. And I yeah, like, I was like, mom, making plans. <laughs> mom, you got to meet her. This oh, is great. <laughs> <laughs> and and they, it is well they do play on that of the like well hold on yeah you know like I I do like seeing that come in a lot of that it is, hurts but you're like a lot of that it was very real to me yeah I but I, <laughs> there was a lettuce moment in this movie that I have to point out um, before you pointed out many people have reached out we've said yes. lettuce moment a lot lately and if you are listening the lettuce moment refers to our episode on the Breakfast Club right where I think we just put out another TikTok about it where uh, Emilio's character is eating that giant sandwich. And he turns, and a piece of lettuce just magically falls off of that sandwich. Yeah, and it refers. It's our definition of basically being like that was not planned. Yep. But it was so perfect that that is the shot they had to use. Moments yeah. in movies where like you do all of this planning, and something accidentally happens that enhances the scene yes. is a lettuce moment. And so that's that's yeah. what we coined. Yep. Uh, but in this one is uh, when they're in the shower. Uh, and she like he presses her up against the door or whatever, and the door flies open. That wasn't supposed to happen. What? And so her like her laugh and, and like their reactions were genuine. No so shit. I, I thought that was kind of fun. That's nice. a lettuce moment right there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's move on to the final scene. So the next morning, Alec goes to the apartment to apologize to Kevin and finds Leslie there. After losing her job, Jules locks herself in her apartment, intending to freeze to death. Her friends come together to her rescue. Wendy moves into her own place. Billy moves to New York City. Alec and Kevin make up, and the group makes plans to meet for brunch. This is an interesting moment. Um, I'm, I'm going to the uh, the Jules locking herself in the apartment thing. Um, <laughs> One a lot of yada yada of a lot of scenes. In, <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay with it. What's the wait? What <laughs> yada yada our way through a lot of scenes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I know. I know. I know. Uh, I just have to say, it's very. It's okay. Interesting way to attempt suicide. <laughs> it's a, it's a <laughs> um, terrifying. Take way. a long time because boy, that's a long time because. Well, by the way, Jules, it's it's only like it's it's only like it's thirty five degrees out. It's like it's <laughs> oh, and, and it's you not know, quite. I think back in the eighties, they didn't have access to like weather apps on their phones. Yeah. Turns yeah. out a heat wave was coming. Yeah. It's weird. It's like weird. it's going to go up to the fifties. It's, it's almost like it's a cry for help. I know. <laughs> oh, you know? weird. It's That's kind of weird. Super strange. Huh? But by the way, <laughs> hey, selfish cry for help. Hey, go get Billy. Go get Billy. He'll help this scenario. <laughs> Who, by the and way, then, the <laughs> night before just was the biggest piece of shit to Jules. Yes. Ever. And then, um, hey, I know what to do. Let's get a blowtorch up here. What? How did that? Who like, has a blowtorch? Who, who, it's like, don't worry. I've got the blowtorch in the car. Like, they lug an entire setup up there. This isn't like, this isn't the days of, like, Ryobi and DeWalt. <laughs> like, wireless, cordless everything. They they bring an entire blowtorch setup up to this thing and, like, don't even cut through a bar. <laughs> It's just like I don't know. There, it was. It just seemed like way over the top for for me. It's like, well, what what kind of solution can we come up with? And Joel Schumacher's just like a blowtorch. <laughs> that was. I just th- feel like it was really weird writing. And then Kevin, uh, yeah, Kevin is like up to his cynical ways again because you know basically. Uh, Ali Sheedy's character rejected him pretty much, and he's just like, "Yeah, I'm, just, I'm sarcastic and cynical again because uh, we need an experienced thief. I'll get Billy." I was kidding. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then uh, Billy g- comes crashing in through the, through the through the door. He's like, "Hi, Billy." <laughs> That's really funny. That's really funny. Yeah. And then and then he's like, he's about he's you know uh, Alec has got him like hanging, and he's about to get murdered. He's like, "Oh man, isn't this ironic?" <laughs> <laughs> So how do you feel about Andrew McCarthy? <sighs> <laughs> Great performer. Yeah, Great. No. It really gets this character across. Yeah, they 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 go zero to sixty like really quick between uh, like Kevin and Alec, you know. Uh, yeah, and then it's just like, mm. and then back to zero again, and then back to like, yeah, I do love you. Yeah, You're, we're friends. Well, Eskimo brothers for life. <laughs> all right, <laughs> right, dude. Yeah, all right. Wiener cousins. Yeah, wiener cousins. Yeah, isn't that what that is? Oh. Oh. Let's play a game here. Let's let's go ten years from now. Let's talk about wh- what each character is doing. Okay. So we know we know Kirby. <laughs> Kirby's in, in jail, right? Uh, yeah. What what I mean, did he go to jail for? Probably he 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 was became a serial killer or like he he beat a woman to death. Probably sure. stalking. St- some sort of stalking. Yeah. 
I don't know if stalking laws were like restraining orders, restraining multiple restraining, violating orders. restraining orders. He, so he's in prison. OK, what do you think happened to Alec? He skyrocketed up the political ladder. I mean, that's just the way it is in, in American politics. Yeah, he, he's he's actually they're gr- they're grooming him to be like, this oh, kid, yeah, this kid's fucking this kid's money. Heck yeah. yeah, dude. I think Kevin went on to uh, like become uh, he, he got some columns. He got like a regular column in the paper. OK. And then uh once, once two thousand and let's say around like seventeen came around, um, podcasts were a thing. And oh so, shit! And so his friend Mike asked him to be on a podcast, and uh, <laughs> he eventually found love. Eventually, you know, is is engaged. Bought and, a house. Uh, he bought a house and got some dogs. Got a couple dogs. You know, still nice. cynical as fuck, but yeah. just yeah. with a nice twinkle in his eye. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Oh, that's really cool. I <laughs> like that nice. too, man. He finally got laid too. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. Not yet. You know, I haven't proven not it. Not yet. yet. Uh, what about so what what happened to Leslie? Like, you know, clearly Leslie has said, I'm gonna I need some time on my own. I, which she does. She does need some time yeah. on her own. I think I think I think they all do eventually drift apart. Oh, yeah. 100%. Uh, 100, they're, they're not really hanging out much anymore. But I think Leslie does. I think Leslie takes some time for herself, finds a nice career, and I think she, she finds a nice husband, settles down, has a great family. That's not either she, of them. Yes. She that definitely takes like them, a, an eat, pray, love like journey trip. Nice. <laughs> That's what she does. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's what she does. Meets Javier Bardem. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Meets her shit. champion. Bam, son. Yeah, I like that. Yep. What about so? What about Billy? Like, what if Billy, what if Billy gets to New York and like finds finds a job as a saxophone player in a big time band? Meets someone who uh, is, um, yeah, calls he, himself Huey. Oh, fuck. Uh, and he joins the news. Oh, fuck. Or or he or he finds um, he finds out about this uh, show that's been on the air, and he goes and auditions for what. He is Saturday Night Live. <laughs> he's, he, oh okay. shit! Billy, Billy's in the band in Saturday Night Live. Oh my god! There it is. I love that Saturday Night Live band. I'm telling you, he's in New York. He's going. To, he's going to NBC. He's studios. a session player. Like yep. uh, yeah, Saturdays he's at he's at yep. SNL. Uh, all weekdays he's at one of the late night shows. Yep. Four babies, four different moms. Yep. yep. Doesn't see any of them. Nope. Yep. All of his paycheck goes to them. A hundred percent. Yeah. But also too, like Wendy, uh, what happens to her? Or like, it pissed me off. She's like, okay, so she fucked him. She she gave him what he wanted. You know. Yep. What the fuck? That's fuck these so. People. That's so weird. So what happens to Wendy? Like Wendy, I think Wendy gives in and like goes, yeah, fuck. What am I doing? My family's got a ton of money. I'm gonna marry Horatio or <laughs> Horace, <laughs> Terrence. What was his name? <laughs> Is it, what's um, his name? I don't yeah. know. She goes back to him. Yeah. And she's like, "Yeah, you're right. I do want to get in the greeting card business." <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. All right. So yeah. is this? Is there a play then that like, <laughs> you know how how Kevin says like it was love is something invented by like card companies and then like greeting card companies and then Wendy's family Wendy's is like rich from right. greeting cards. Yeah, like Hallmark and the holidays and all this <sighs> crap. Maybe money can buy you love. Maybe it can. It can yeah. buy you. A, it can buy you a card that says so. Yeah. What so. about Jules? Last one. What happens to Jules? Oh, I think she probably put God X's on her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Do you I think th- so? I think she's. She, if yeah. I don't know. I think somebody. I think somebody. Actually, hold up. I bet. I bet Alec and Jules get married. Oh, Alec, because Alec's so? like, I gotta have, a, I need a wife, I need a trophy wife, oh, and Jules man. is like, oh, you got a lot of money, yeah, good call, oh, and they're yeah. like, let's fuck, good call, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's fuck. I'm sorry, I'm just excited. I got well, a lot. Of you need to like as soon like as soon as they were like <laughs> courting, he's like, you need to marry me right now, or otherwise I'm gonna go fuck any chick. That and I she's want. like, you can do whatever you want. What? <laughs> what? Now oh, we're cool. definitely getting married. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, well, what do you think? You got anything else on this one, boys? Fuck no. <sighs> You. Who showed up for brunch? <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> no, no, we're getting out of here. Who the fuck showed up for brunch? That's I bet. A good question. I bet. I bet. Like, I bet Wendy showed up for brunch, and then Alex said Alex like was like running late for something, and he pops in. And he was like gonna plan on saying like uh, I can only hang out for fifteen minutes. Goes sees it's only Wendy in there, and is like, yeah, I'm not gonna go in. And then just, <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never talked and with that, Wendy, and that's it. Like right. everybody, I think every single one of those people ends up like 
walking back past the window, only seeing that it's Wendy in there, and then just says, I'm not going to go <laughs> Damn, in. Damn, I hate uh, this movie. We never really talked to Wendy that much. Because that's how shitty they all are. Did you invite her? She's no, only, I thought you invited she's her. She's the only one who never did coke with us. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, yeah. Something about that rose. She wears wrong. a girdle. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have dissected St. Elmo's Fire with a modern eye, and we have to give it a modern day rating. I'm going to start with AJ. Oh, no. Well, okay. This um, was your choice, right? This, this was your, your choice. It AJ was. did choose this movie. So this has always been talked about as kind of like the spiritual sequel of The Breakfast Club, right? And because of a lot of the same characters and actors, I mean, it's a huge portion of what became the Brat Pack, right? I mean, there's says as many actors as probably any of those movies um, from that group, and I think that there is a lot of, I think there, I think on there is a lot of honesty to this movie. Like, I think there is some real deep down, like, like these are the moments that shittiness just finds its way into people's lives whether it's internal external whatever and it just it's constantly fueled by all the other shitty people you surround yourself with um good bad whatever it happens to be so I, to be honest i'd think that it's it's probably like right on the nose especially if you think about like the 80s not a phone in sight kind of mentality yeah, and like you got to you got to do what you got to do to get ahead in life, whatever that took back then. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of bad shit going on um, in the, in those eras and and trying to find your way through life. And especially after this this post college idea, right? Um, I think that there's some good performances in here, and I do think that. The, the problem really comes down to there's a point where it's a hangout movie and then where you're it's basically like a societal horror movie, too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, I, I truly believe that like it's it, you you don't really want to almost root for anybody, um, maybe for Billy a little bit by, by the end. You're just kind of hoping like, God, I hope somebody's got some direction. Out He's of these the hottest. People. I hope he works it out. Thank God. <laughs> And he slept. He I slept can't with waste the that hotness. On yeah, he, thank goodness he slept with the perceived <laughs> unattractive one. Like because he, they tried gets, to make her he gets that on way. The bus, he's like, took her virgin. And he's he, like, well, he's I can like point to the guy. He's like, yeah, I just took her virgin. Is, is that he's one like, cool? Bro. That one there. He's like, cool. We should start a band in New York. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, anyways, guys, I, I think that there there is some like good stuff to this movie, but in the end, it's like it's. It, I think honestly, it gets covered up by just how really shitty and almost like it's kind of crazy everybody almost is in this movie. So, um, that being said, I, I think I'm going to settle in somewhere right around uh, a six point three five. Six point three five, Sean. What about you, bro? Um, I yeah, I, they're, they're, all these people are shitty. Uh, I think I, I I'm so distracted by the shittiness of of these people and all it. of all of the bad decisions that they make. I can't even see a Joel Schumacher movie. Like I can't see like any artistry to it at all. Like some of the lighting's good. Like even when he's stalking Dale, <laughs> like, it looks like it's lit like a horror movie. And I'm like, well, you did a good job there, I guess. But uh, I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I man. Guess. Like it's 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 pretty hard to watch now. And like yeah. I've known maybe two people in my life that uh, are the shittiest people that I've ever known. And they're no longer in my life. Yeah. You know, that's that's bottom line. That's that's what you need to do. You know, and I think it they are just perpetuating their their shittiness with each other. I'm like, yeah. no one sees what's going on here, okay? Yeah. And it's really hard to watch. Um but like it it is the Brat Pack. I do like seeing these actors together. I do I do still feel like it is the spiritual um you know, kind of, I guess, spiritual in, in a, a devil way uh, of sequel to Breakfast Club. You know, like it's, it, I do feel like that still. Um, th no, this movie sucks. 3.8. <laughs> well, and see, <laughs> that's movie. that's where I think you guys are slightly wrong in this is that is that I love when movies are real, like in the sense of like, yeah, dude, they're fucking shitty because like that's the time. Like, I, okay, so for instance, you think about we talk about in the Sandlot. Like at one point, you went out to play with your friends for the last time. You didn't know. Yeah. I love the sentiment of taking that thought to this because it happens. At one point, you and your best friends went out to a bar and said, "This this is never going to end. We're going to be friends forever." And then a moment changed, and and you all started to go your separate ways. There, there's something more terrifying to me 
than the freshman year of high school. And there's something even more terrifying to me than the freshman year of college. It's the freshman year of the real world, mm. which is what they are in. And, dude, I'm not going to lie to you. When I got out of co- the year after I got out of college was the worst year of my life. And, and that's for many, many reasons. However, I still look back on it, like, so fondly because of, like, the trouble, the trife that I went through and, like, just, like, learning and being better and being able to look back on that and be like, I was kind of shitty and my friends were kind of shitty, but like, thank God we figured it out. We grew up and the people that weren't cool. I don't talk to them anymore. You know, like I like that period of growth in life. And I feel like this movie really nails it. If you came from that era of like spending a lot of time in college and then trying to figure out your way in the real world. Yeah. They characters suck, but it's like everybody I knew kind of sucked <laughs> Like at that point in my life. If you yeah. look back on it, and so I don't want it to be a fairy tale. And so I, I'm actually going to give it a 7.8. Like, I very much fucking enjoyed this movie. I do have to say, I think that there's a... They, they kind of nail it on the head of, uh, like, at the very end, they don't want to go into their old bar again. Where yes, the old there are those college moments. bar. And they decide, well, let's go to a place that's... Let's go to Hula Hands. Qu- yeah, Hula Hands. A little choir, less young yeah. you know, people. And I think that is a there, there is another good point maybe hidden in this movie just as a final note of why I kind of chose it. I think, I think that everybody goes through that period in their life where like you just said, Mike, you don't realize probably how shitty you are, you know, how, how shitty things have to be sometimes some, and you don't, and you and your friends perpetuate the shittiness in your circle and you might not even do it on purpose. It's no, just, you're definitely it's, not being it's, a piece of shit on purpose. Right. You know? Like uh, most people I don't think have those conscious thoughts, but unfortunately like I think it's it's kind of a sad and I think it's a truth that a lot of people need to realize is you probably went through years of your life that you were shitty and you, you didn't realize it and thank God you can look back now. Hopefully you're somebody who can look back now and say, "Yeah, like I did some shitty thing." You're yeah. Like had oh, shitty man, times of my life too. Like, all right, yeah, yeah. I treated that girl pretty shitty that one time. Like, whatever. You can you can know that you grew up out of that. Yeah, and but we don't know what happens to these guys. But we don't. It, it is yeah. that time that you look back on. You're like, holy shit. Okay. At twenty two, twenty three, though, guys. Like, I, you know, it's it's not. I I, I can't. I can't see you guys being like that, you know, but like, and maybe you, maybe you think that you were, but it's just, you guys had responsibilities. You guys had, uh, friends that you needed to keep, like keep taken care of. You know, I, I don't believe that at all. And I, I, I just wholeheartedly disagree <laughs> because these people have no redeeming factor. Mm. You guys realize that in your friend group that you might not, this might not last that long. Mm-hmm. And and that's okay, you know. And then when it doesn't, you're just like, okay, uh, you know, maybe I did make some bad decisions decisions in the day, but they were never to hurt, purposely hurt anybody. I don't no, think these, these guys these, were purposely. Hurting they are. People, con- they have to be conscious of this shit. I just don't I, think I, they were. It is, it is like it, I don't see it as a reality in the way that that you guys are. I think it's a heightened shitty reality. I don't disagree with that. That it's a heightened sense of it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a movie, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. But yeah. that's the beauty of this show is we get to disagree. Uh, we got executive producer Josh Miller. He says that was definitely not about young medical students. <laughs> I, I don't know what this movie was really about or if it really had a plot or a story. <laughs> yes, I see it's about the daily life struggles of seven twenty somethings which each having their own trials and tribulations. I also get I just said what the plot is, but that was it. No earth-shattering <laughs> stuff, just a Wednesday for them. <laughs> sure, sure, it, sure it had a star-studded cast, but upon closer look, this cast was largely unknown until this movie. With Breakfast Club coming out only months before this, I struggled to find entertainment in this movie. I didn't find the acting to be awful, but it wasn't great. Some of the dialogue felt bad, even forced at times. The set design was great, though. If you, It's like if you tried to make an 80s-themed movie using AI today. <laughs> can I have the wall in Demi Moore's apartment? Yes, you can. Yeah. My girlfriend wants Demi's hair crimps. I told her no. <laughs> she doesn't listen to the show she can't have a prop <laughs> the one thing that caught my attention was the use of the theme music over and over again not the man in motion song but the instrumental song besides the bar scenes it felt like it was the only score to the
the film. While this movie is well-liked by a lot of people, I can see why it's never been on a list of anyone's must-watch. Rob Lowe and Demi Moore are better in About Last Night. Apparently, I, I enjoy agree. the teen dramas of the 80s much more. I'd rather watch Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, 16 Candles. I can now say I've seen this movie, one of the very few movies you guys have covered that that is a I haven't seen. Does Joel Schumacher make movies I like? Stand by. He does. Of his 38 directing credits, he's made 2.5. Falling Down, A Time to Kill, and I kind of enjoyed Phone Booth. So did I. Okay. Uh, he's forgetting Lost Boys, though, right? I maybe, mean, maybe maybe he didn't like maybe Lost he doesn't Boys. Enjoy he doesn't like All right, fine. Whatever, whatever Josh. Wow, <laughs> I don't think I did either, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Critically, I don't see myself ever watching this again, but I've seen worse movies. I give this a 5. That is a 5.74 for the group modern day rating. I'm I'm definitely bringing it up a little bit but not much. 5.74 is going to put this at 114th spot that is wow. right below Encino Man, right above Teen Wolf is where that is going to lie. I'm just glad I didn't beat Encino Man. Yeah, thank God. But I'm just saying if you want it just just for shits and giggles if you want to take out my 7.8 it's a 5.05. That's going to slide it in right above the cutting edge, right below over the top. Below over the top. But, but you're not allowed to. to. I'm saying if you're if you going to, <laughs> if, you, uh, yeah. if you're going to, that's where it would be. But you can't. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the episode, everybody. Thanks for being here. Tune in next week. We're going into the 2000s, our first Paul Rudd movie, Role Models. People are pumped about this. Wow. That is on Netflix, I believe. You can still watch that. One of the one of the streamings that everybody has. And then it's Thanksgiving time. We are going to touch some Pauly Shore. We're going to touch Pauly Shore with Son-in-Law. <laughs> it's going to be a fantastic one. If you're new to the podcast, go back this time. Last year, we did Hook. That was a fun episode yeah, talking about Hook. Yeah. We had a good time. Some Robin good Williams one. in our life. You can never go wrong with that. Are you guys ready for some holiday happenings? We're starting it in with this wonderful fall Thanksgiving weather. Thank you guys so much for listening to uh, St. Elmo's Fire. I feel like it's kind of a nice fall movie. I don't know about you. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a nice fall movie. Uh, but we really do appreciate you guys listening. Thank you so much. Please leave us a review. Five stars on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. Write us a review. We really do appreciate that. Follow us on social media. Uh, at Confused Breakfast. Just search for Confused Breakfast. And check us out on YouTube. We got here in the studio having all sorts of fun. Go to confusedbreakfast.com as well to see our merch. We're going to update that here soon, hopefully. Get some new shirts for you. Got some koozies there. Um, we got some, uh, you know, uh, little little vials of cocaine there with our logo on it. <laughs> yep. It's kind of fun. Um, go to confusedbreakfast.com as well to uh, see all of the ratings of the movies we've ever done. See AJ's ratings, see Mike's ratings, and see my ratings. And then see the show's ratings overall. Okay, bye. I love you. Support the podcast by getting some stuff from our great sponsors. Microdose, Cedar Ridge, definitely support those guys. Directly sponsor the podcast yourself by going to patreon.com slash confused breakfast. So many bonus extra perks there for you guys. And we are produced by Upload Media Group and Cedar Rabbits. We have famed old producer Jeremy Jacobs on the board today. You can see him uh, killing it on TikTok at Jeej underscore talk. That's J-E-E-J underscore T-O-K. Doing some great stuff on there. And we are a part of the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. Learn more at cloud10.fm. That's it for us. Goodbye. Goodbye. I can see the wisdom I ran a pair of fans. I fire. Made in a wheelchair is rolling. Rolling down the sidewalk.